Please stand as you are able. And our opening hymn is hymn number 450. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll recite the glory. <clears throat> glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, 
Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the Collect for the Day on page 2. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true relationship, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is Exodus 3, 1 through 15, a reading from Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you, that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thou, you shall say, Oh, excuse me. Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent you to, me, to you. God also said to Moses, 
Thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning, Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6, 23 through 26, and 45c, found on page 2, 3 in your order of worship. We will recite the psalm responsively by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him, sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done. His wondering and his judgment on his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. Israel came into Egypt. And Jacob became the soldier in the land of The Lord made his people exceedingly <coughs> fruitful. He made them stronger than Abraham. Whose heart he turned so that they hated his people. He sent Moses his servant. And Aaron who had Joseph. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from Romans twelve, nine through twenty one. A reading from Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I think I may have mentioned this last week. I don't, don't know. I lose track of illustrations I've used from time to time. Uh, one of the two most recent discussions that I've been having with an, in an online clergy group has to do with a person reflecting on how they've changed their preaching and ministry in the last 20 years. And this, of course, then developed into a rather polarized argument between the author, a dogmatic evangelical and progressive, with respect to that theology evolution. Because that's what the person who wrote the article said. My theology has changed from that first sermon to today over 20 years, give or take. From the dogmatic perspective, he was saying, your theology cannot evolve if you have been formed correctly. How you understand God is not malleable. And of course, the progressive side of this says, theology, remembering that that is how we describe our relationship with God, must evolve as our awareness of God in our midst changes. We have to evolve in how we understand God not the fundamentals of God, but how we see God at work in the world around us. And we have to remember that how we perceive God is ch changes based on who we are and where we've been. It's not simply that we know something and it's just facts. A, B, C, one plus one is two. It has to do with the things which come into our lives which challenge us and make us think about what God means to us. Our understanding of God evolves as we see God in others, and more importantly, as we become more open to God at work in our lives. And some claims without some extensive development, but worth remembering in general, we as humans are gregarious. And no, that's not just me, that's us as a, as a group of people. 
we by nature select to be in groups with others who are more or less like us. We are, in fact, bound together by the communities that we develop and that we work in and by the rules that we set for ourselves of proper behavior and proper relationships. Secondly, as we start delving into today's gospel in a second, we need to remember that love is not something which is emotional, at least in God's world. It's about relationship. It, in fact, develops out of being gregarious. Without the desire to remain in a relationship, even with the differences that human beings have, humanity will, in fact, become its worst self. We continue to find ourselves in the development of the gospel pivot from building an understanding about God and how we are called to bear witness to actually going out and bearing the witness to Christ and the life-giving nature of the Messiah, the one who was anointed by God because he is God. Last week, we heard Peter declare that Jesus was the Messiah, God's anointed one, the son of the living God. And if we remember, Jesus congratulates him and gives Peter, and by extension, the disciples, the keys to the kingdom. Strangely, without discussion, we don't really know exactly what that means. Jesus doesn't elaborate. You have the keys to the kingdom and you can bind on earth and in heaven. And that's odd, but not too odd in Jesus' world or in our world with Jesus. And today the story continues with Jesus enlightening the disciples and Peter about the role of the Messiah. He tells them the truth about his Messiahship. He is going to go to Jerusalem, be handed over, sacrificed by the religious institution with the goal to restore all people to their true nature with God. And we hear Peter, be Peter, lays into Jesus and intentionally tell, and essentially tells him that he doesn't know what it means to be the Messiah. Really? Peter knows what it means to be the the Messiah, but Jesus, who is in fact the Messiah, and Peter called him that, doesn't understand. Because in Peter's world, the Messiah is power-wielding and divides us from them, the insiders from the outsiders. The problem is Jesus is trying to tell Peter that the job of God's anointed is not to protect the individual's image of God. Rather, God's anointed are supposed to bear the fruits of the relationship with God and with their community. (coughs) The disciples' job as the anointed people and us, by extension, is not to return to the status quo that was years ago, but to actively seek God's presence in new ways and new places. Jesus highlights the eternal truth. Being in and with God is a commitment to relational love. The maintenance of a relationship within a community. One which weathers the disturbances in the relationships when friction and misunderstanding occur between the members of that group. By being anointed into relationship through baptism, we are required to acknowledge our gifts and to use those gifts to bear fruit, to move forward from, and I don't like this word, but I'll use it because it's appropriate, from our primitive understanding of God, that unrefined place where we meet God at the beginning and as we continue to refine our understanding. (coughs) Our mission as 21st century disciples is fairly simple, as it were, to carry on the missions of spreading the word about God's love. As we continue to develop our practice, we will be able to lead others to new places where they realize that they are part of God's community and God's family. By carrying on the mission that we have been given, we will realize that the life of faith does not manifest 
equally between believers because we're in different places. We have different capacities. We see God and recognize God differently. But that doesn't mean that we don't all recognize God in some way. No matter what we do in our lives, our mission is to live a godly life. And even when others don't show us that same respect, even when others aren't godly to us, we are still supposed to exhibit the traits of godliness. To do good for good's sake and to demonstrate that the power of love is greater than the power of hate. Our mission is to continue to realize that our image of God cannot be self-serving. It can't be something that makes us bigger and better than our neighbor. The focus is fixed, when the focus is fixed on God, what we perceive as our benefit or loss may not exactly be that. Because God's economy and God's world lives outside of our preconceived notions about God and God's community. God's love wins if we set aside our skewed image of what God's love means, or maybe better, of how God's love is demonstrated in us and in our neighbor. The mission is born by the connections that we make in God's name, even when the connection is difficult. The connection and the mission is born by us getting up and moving and talking to people and helping them see God in their midst even when it means changing our perception of how God's truth plays out in our lives, we can't forget that God's truth is always at work in our lives. We are called not to sacrifice our identity as God's people, but by staying connected with each other to better comprehend how God is calling us forward from this point. <coughs> our challenge and our invitation this day and in our future is to take courage and to trust in the power that comes from our relationship with Christ. We are called like those, like those first disciples to reach out and to follow where Christ has called us, to find others who can benefit from the assurance that we have received among ourselves, among these families, among our extended Christian family over the year, and yes, in this place. God is constant in affection for creation. God will continue to love us until we give, until we give up on God. And as we look for God in others and in ourselves, we will learn more about God as we share our experience of God. We are called to follow the saints of old, but not to be in love with what was, and that's an emotional love, not a relational love, but to be in love with what we know about Jesus, that Jesus taught us how to live in a relationship when things don't go exactly like we want them to or expect them to. We need to be in love with what God calls us to do, and what is that? To feed the hungry, to tend to the sick, to be in relationship with our neighbors. And that means to be able to listen to them, to be in tune to where they are, and help them find God in the midst of the life that they are living today and forever. God has put people in our lives to learn about God with us and with them. And we know who those people are. We meet them all the time, not inside these walls, but outside the doors. How is God inviting us to be in that place, to look for others who will help us grow in our faith, no matter where we are on our journey? In light of Paul's advice and his direction, we know what our mission is and what it means to follow Jesus. Our job as we go from this place today is to share God's unfailing love with others. And how, and this is in fact how we take up our cross daily, what Jesus told us to do. This is what it means for us to be anointed by God, to be the bearers of his banner in 21st century Suffolk. 
to look for new ways to see God present in our midst, in ourselves and in others. Not to bring the power to us, but to bring God's power to all. Our job is to continue to share God's unfailing love so that they can understand the rewarding and real life filled with hope, love, and community in a world that seems to be hopeless, unloved, and, dis and divided. The job that we have moving forward from today is not to divide the ins from the outs. Our job as people who believe in God and the mission that God has given to us is to consolidate all people all creation under the restorative umbrella of God in the person of Jesus Christ. It's not something which we know that was in the past and will never be that because we know it will never be the same. God is inviting us to move forward, keeping our eye on God and being in relationship with God, with ourselves and with our community today and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able and turn into page five in our order of worship. Let us recite the Nicene Creed, our ancient confession of faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. In today's gospel, Jesus invites us to follow him as he laid down his life in intercession for the world. Let us pray on behalf of people everywhere, saying, Lord, strengthen us. 
for all people of faith who struggle to believe in the promise of life amid the clamor of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, strengthen us. For the churches who must bear witness to the possibility of taking up the cross and following Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, strengthen us. For those who are losing their souls in the pursuit of worldly gain, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, strengthen us. For those laying down their lives in faithful dedication to God's call, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, strengthen us. For those who are to die this week, and for their safe passage to the life of the world to come, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, strengthen us. For those here present who will one day be judged by God's standards and meet Christ coming in the glory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, strengthen us. For those who are afflicted by natural disasters and human-caused strife, especially for those impacted by the tropical storms Hillary, Franklin, and Howard, fires in Maui, and those in Ukraine, Russia, and the Middle East, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, strengthen us. Most high God, your ways are not our ways, yet your ways bear life. Hear the petitions of your assembled people. Pour out in your world the faith to hear your call and the courage to answer it. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who is one with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Greet one another in the peace of Christ. Ascribe to the Lord the honor of his name, bring offerings, and come into his court.
Please stand as you are able. Our service continues with the great day is giving Eucharistic Prayer A found on page 8 in your order of worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. 
All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Post communion prayer is found on page 9 in your order of worship. Let us pray. 
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Please be seated for some announcements. Our closing hymn is hymn number 376. is just beginning. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.